hello and welcome to my channel um, for anybody that doesn't know me my name is Victoria DL I am very lucky and fortunate to be on Tonic Studios design team here in the UK um, we have a launch on Monday uh, the 24th of June at 10 a.m. Um, the schedule shows are 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and the last show 9 p.m. Not sure the stock will last until 9pm, but obviously um, if you're interested in these die sets, you'll be watching the shows and keeping an eye on the stock. Um, I think this will be such a popular die set. Uh, for any of you that like to make your memory books and things like that, I think obviously these will be invaluable. But I think they'll be invaluable for cards, for pockets, etc. But just stunning gifts. Um, I've made a few creations for the show, uh, one being this camera that you can see here. Um, I'm going to do the same camera but in a different colourway, um, just for something different. Um, it does open up, there are some little clasps on the side here, uh, both sides, and you can get those from, dare I say it, that place called Amazon. Um, and then you open it out and it's a concertina. Now this concertina could be as long or as short as you want it. I actually did for the TV January to December. Um, and then a couple of spare ones each side for obviously because you're going to stick it inside the box at both ends. So you're not going to be able to get into the last two sections. So um, the one I've done for today is a tiny little bit shorter and it's going to be little pockets of photographs because I thought what a wonderful gift this would be just to store little photographs inside um, and again it closes with the little clasps each side and then you know it closes to a lovely gift box it's basically just boxes that's all it is um, you're going to see the film strip with the decoration and you all know that's from memory books too from tonic studios <clears throat> and then we're going to um, decorate it with these rolled flowers and they were from the original kaleidoscope sets this little picture here is just a black and white image i've had in a, a die cut paper pack and uh, i've just used it for the purposes of this demonstration so that said um well crack on I think now I started off by making the base and I've used this scoreboard it's from hunky dory but obviously use any scoreboard that you wish um, I should well I should really start by saying where are my manners the die set that's what it's all about isn't it um, this is the concertina index box uh, the largest die will fit and you will need an A4 die cutting machine for this die. Uh, if you haven't got an A4 machine, I guess you could actually draw around the die with a pencil and place the score lines in using a ruler. Um, you know, if you really wanted the die set and didn't have an A4 machine, because all the rest of the dies that are in the set and there are uh, little your little dies here to make the pocket the little tags that go inside the pockets um, and we do have some stamps as well so I'll show you those shortly um, we go over here there's some the, the stamps and we'll talk through those in a minute so yeah you can use this die set if you haven't got an A4 machine if you trace around it and place the score lines in but if you want a, neat, a really neat finish and you have an A4 machine then that's that's fantastic um, you will see here at the sides there are there's this die and it cuts uh, a little strip out for you to decorate the sides of the concertina box um, and the other one on the other side puts a pattern it puts like a like a stitched pattern um, within the die so this cuts into the side of the card uh, you will notice that there are several different sentiments and I think we've got 
um, reminder, index, dates, special things and cherished places. Also, you've got a gift tag, so you could have that hanging off the item if you wanted to, or you could put something else on the gift tag. And then you'll see these little thin dies here at the bottom, if we can get those out. And they are for your ribbon to slide through. So I'll show you one that we've got partially made up here. This one, I haven't used the uh, ribbon, but... Uh, as you'll see on the show, there are some with ribbon threaded through and you would basically put that there and you would put it through your die cutting machine and it would put the holes through the two pieces of the base for you. Um, the same with this one, it's a ribbon threader. Uh, but like you'll see on this one, I haven't used the ribbon threader and obviously as you can make out there, these are the little strips to decorate the sides and I've actually decorated the bottom as well just you don't have to do that that's just me going off on a tangent because I got rather excited um, then you've got this beautiful decorative panel here and as you will see I mean I, I don't know what all the design team have made I've seen some of it but I've not seen all of it yet our Jen did an absolutely beautiful beautiful project and she's colored it with i think they may be aqua flows but it could be alcohol markers but i'm not quite sure i think i think it's aqua flows if you know our gem and a coloring's just blown me away it, you will see it on the, the show it's beautiful so these are absolutely gorgeous to fill in with color if you like coloring um there's another decorative panel here at the bottom as well and they could be decorated to go on here uh, you have this die here and it has three cutting edges to the sides and the bottom and to the top it's left blank now this will cut the square for you and then you will use the header die across the top to put your headers in the different places um, and then we have like a little stitched square die here and that's a layer to place on top of there so if you have a photograph and you'd like to put photographs on these then this will cut your photograph out to place on there and you could put journaling on the back if you wanted to i'm not going to bore you to death about journaling again but you could do that if you wanted to so those are the dies and then we have stamps and these are fantastic stamps We've got, I'm not sure if you can see it that close. We have index, reminders, planner, recipes, birthdays. You've got dates. You've got January to December. And then you have mon uh, Monday to Sunday. And then you have all the numbers that you need. And some little decorations and a little plaque there. This is a fabulous stamp. It stamps the lines. So you can actually fit three next to each other on here um side by side and you can put the numbers and then obviously it could be a reminder you could put well dentist or whatever it's going to be um there's so many different things that you can use these for um you, you're just going to be well you're not going to be stuck for ideas that is for sure uh you're going to be away with the fairies as i say when you get hold of this set because the minute it arrived i was so excited um I do get quite passionate about my craft and, you know, my husband looks at me sometimes as if I've lost my marbles, but I know you all understand that. <laughs> so, to kickstart this project off, and I'm only laughing because I know you'll be laughing because I know you understand where I'm coming from. You will need two pieces of 8 by 8 square card. And if you have a scoreboard like this where you have a box lid and a box base, that's fantastic. So for this for this piece of card, the two pieces actually that are eight by eight square, we want to score at one and a half on all four sides. And then again the same on this next piece. And it doesn't matter if you use both on the base or both on the lid, but I use both of these pieces on the lid side so they're both exactly the same and scored on the exact same lines 
okay so that's those two and then I've actually cut a little section out on each corner um, to create the box I'm not sure if you know how to make boxes and I don't want to patronize you because I know a lot of you out there do but I've got to remember that there are new crafters all the time that maybe have never made a box before and blind me there are some new crafters joining the groups I see them every day joining which is absolutely lovely so we just want to score on all the four sides and you will see the box then come together and all you're going to do is put glue on these little flaps and then hold it together you can put a peg there and walk away and leave it whilst it's drying but it doesn't take long for the tonic deluxe adhesive to grab that's the reason i love this glue um, so you're going to do that to both of those pieces to create the base of your box okay then you're going to decorate the box with some decorative strips of card and I've just used blue for this project um, as you can see just allowing a slight border and then I have added these special little hinges and locks now you can get these from Amazon you probably can get them off eBay and I think actually the works have been selling them and I think they've only been a pound or so a packet I don't think they're very expensive um, and as you can see I what I did I aligned the two boxes to meet they don't sit inside one another they just meet together and with a pencil I've just marked where I wanted to put the hinges and then they just lock in place like this if you wanted you could actually put fancy brass feet on the bottom if you wanted to for extra decoration but for this I think it, it was just perfect the way it was so um, that's your base box created okay then we're going to make two smaller boxes and for this you will need four pieces of cardstock that measure four and a half inches square for two of them you want to basically score one this is where your lid and your base come in handy if you've got one of those scoreboards and basically you want to score this one at one inch on all four sides and that's on your box lid side then you want to score on one inch exactly the same but you want to score on your box base side and this just gives you a tiny tiny little bit of a measurement where your base will fit to your lid without having to measure it or do anything like that but if you make your boxes that way then that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever um so again that's four and a half square and you're scoring at one inch all the way around all four sides and for this for this myself I've scored it on the base lid and the base and the, the lid and the base so you've got that slight little measurement to put my teeth in the right way today blimey then these two pieces also measure four and a half inch square but this time you're going to score at half an inch on all four sides and then on this side of the board you're going to go half an inch on all four sides and again it will give you that tiny little measurement difference so your lid fits over the base okay and then you're just going to fold those as we've done previously with the bigger lid and base and make a box but you're actually when you glue them you're going to actually glue the lid to the base so as here they're glued together it's just a solid box now um, and then I've decorated it as before with uh, the cardstock wear so that was your um, inch depth box and then this is your half inch again the base is stuck to the lid and uh, it's all it's all solid there 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to glue the small box onto the larger box and I'm going to do that now. So we'll just unclog the glue. And I'm just going to, when we find a pin, and unclog the glue. It always happens when you're doing a video. There we go. Let's find a pin. There we go. Now, add some glue. I'm going to add quite a bit of glue because I need it to, to grab. And then we're just going to place that in the center and just hold it just for a, a couple of seconds really or a minute or so and uh, let that grab any excess glue either wipe off or it, it will dry clear anyway because it is a dry clear glue the dough looks adhesive so I'm just going to stick that to one side and uh, let that dry so next uh, we need to make the lens cover now I can't honestly tell you how many circles I actually cut out here but it's a fair amount um, I don't know maybe 12 maybe just from your basic circle dies and then I cut another one the same size and then the next size smaller to make the ring and then I found an old black and white topper um, from a die cut pad and placed that onto the the circle and then I placed a piece the same size as this in acetate over the top and then place the ring on top of the acetate. Did have to hold it for uh, a minute or so whilst it dried to the acetate because obviously it's a slippery surface. And then that's going to go on there like that. So we'll glue that in place now. There we go. You have to excuse me if I go quiet. I kind of go in a zone of my own really when I'm we'll move this out the way now because we don't need that again yeah I tend to go in a world of my own when I'm crafting and then I forget to speak at the same time <laughs> so that's grabbed there and then we just want a tiny little strip in the blue and this is just going to go around the edge just to neaten it off so I'm going to start at the bottom so that if it overlaps, it can overlap at the bottom. And I'm just going to apply wet glue to the strip. You could use red liner tape and, and you can use red liner tape to actually stick this concertina box together. Um, it's just... If I use red liner, I always use wet glue as well as. And I know it's going to get some, as we say, welly. It's going to get handled quite a bit. It's going to get played with quite a bit. And you don't want it falling apart, do you, at the other end? Because they're not going to know how to put it back together. Um, so I always kind of use red liner and wet glue together. Um, or just wet glue and I am a huge fan of wet glue I must say because I do like to make projects I do like to make 3d things um, that's, that's one of my favorite things really so obviously when that's sat at the bottom you're not going to see a join line either a join line at the top so if this is dry we're going to place this onto there and again I'm just using wet glue you could use um, a gel medium uh, if you wanted to uh, I don't know whether I'd use wet glue to be honest um, uh, not wet glue uh, hot glue um, sometimes 
hot glue is great and it and it grabs straight away but sometimes it's not got that longevity you know it, things can come apart eventually um with a project like this so i use hot glue to put flowers on and things like that but not really for construction you know of, of boxes etc so i'm going to put that to one side and then you'll see here i've cut the film strip from the memory books 2 album and then i've used this little handle and you'll remember this from the Kensington bag, the little case. And I've actually glued two together to make it a little bit more rigid. And uh, that's going to go on the box as well. So I'm now going to show you how the actual concertina goes together. Okay. And basically this is what that die, the large die cuts out. And you have two score lines each side here. And you want to fold those inwards, okay? And then with a bone folder, just go over your score lines. So you'll fold those over. For this actual project, um, I've glued these together. Now, if you were going to put the holes in to thread ribbon through, you would fold it here and then you would place your die over the top here, put some tape on it to hold it in place and run it through your die cutting machine and it will put the two holes right through. But for this one, we're not actually using the holes for this project. So now you've got flaps at the back. So we're going to turn it over and we want to fold them back, forward and back and then go over them again with the bone folder. So we'll do that again, back, forward and back. I know it's hard to see on black card, I never thought of that when I was uh, thinking of a video. So we'll just put all those score lines in place. There we go. And now I'm going to glue the front pocket to the back. So again, I am using wet glue. You could use red liner tape or red liner tape and a little bit of glue, which I think most of you actually do because you like the wet, the red liner to grab and then it will dry with the wet adhesive so you just want to put it straight up to the to it meets at the top ring it over and then tuck that other side in like that and then as Ali showed you on the live the other day go over it with your bone fold because it does make the glue grab and it, then it gives you that nice crisp edge as well and this tool from Tomic it's amazing I use it all the time now it it's changing my life really um the, the just the finish i can't explain it but when you go to crease something the finish afterwards you go oh mg why didn't i have this tool sooner so yeah brilliant so there we go and all these things like the tools and things that you'll see me use they're all available on the tonic website as well so they fold back at the sides like that and that is your pocket. You've got a pocket there and you'll have a gap and then you'll attach the next one and you'll have a pocket and a gap and so on. So we'll glue these little strips in place just to show you how uh, I decorated the sides. And then we'll, we'll put it together. It's not difficult. This box is not difficult at all. Uh, and I think any of you that follow me um, you know I don't do difficult. I just love playing. I really, I wish I had more time to, to play, play, play. But um, we're so busy. Uh, by the time we've we've done one launch, we, we've got another one sat on the desk ready. So, um, but... Mix and match. Get all your old dies out and, and mix and match with your new dies. It's it's really important to do that so that you get the longevity out of your, your dies. At the end of the day, you've worked hard 
um, to pay for your dies. So you need them to get some some work done, but oh, always mix and match them, definitely. So just two last ones to place on. And put these on the bottom. Now, like I said, these are optional. You don't have to put these on the bottom if you don't want to. You might think, oh, well, bottom's not going to get seen. It You don't need to, but just me. Just me. There we go. Uh, and for these pockets, I actually use the Craft Perfect cardstock. Um... I just, I think it just folds so well, um, but I mean you can use any cardstock that you've got, but I, yeah, I really love this Craft Perfect cardstock. So there you have the pocket, okay, and what you will do, I'll bring this one back over that we've already prepared earlier, and basically you will put adhesive on the back here of the strips and then I place it downwards like that just so I can see and then you will place that on the edge there and and then squeeze it hold it for a minute let it dry then flip it over and do the other tab on the other side but we've got enough on this one for the project that we're making so as I showed you before of the way the dies cut out these actually slip inside each pocket like so and you see that there and they go in there now for this project I've left the first two pockets empty because they're actually going to sit inside the box you're not actually going to be able to get in these but for that depth you would need to put two on each end only for this project if you were just doing a concertina like this with the ribbon through and the decorative panels front and back then you would put uh, one of these in each pocket I'm not actually going to stamp any of these because this is going to be uh, a gift for a friend and I've left them blank so that they could actually put photographs on those panels or they could do journaling, they, they can do whatever they want. But that's how they, they go together like that. So, we did the box earlier. We opened the box up. This is going to be my back and this is going to be my front. And it doesn't really matter which is the front and which is the back, to be honest, as long as you make sure it's the right way up. And I won't tell you how I know that. <laughs> so basically it's going to sit in there like so. So you're going to stick it more or less near the bottom. So as you will see for the last panel I cut the edges off so that it was flush. You could leave them in place and just glue for inside on the side of the tabs. But for this one I have um, taken them off. So I'll put plenty of glue on there because it's going inside the box and once you've kind of got it kind of center on inside I kind of squish it all up and press down and just hold it for a few seconds until that glue has grabbed and then we're going to stick the other side in so we'll just hold that for a little minute or two um, until it's dried. I don't want any embarrassing things happening on the video where <laughs> it comes unhinged. So I think that should should have grabbed it by now. There we go. Yeah. And then we're going to glue in the other side. So again, make sure everything is the right way up with your locks and your hinges. So that's right. Again, I'm going to put the glue on this front panel here. My apologies, I forget. I'm not in shot. A whole new learning curve, these videos, I tell you. Take my hat off to you people that know what you're doing. Right. Again, I'm going to put it in that way. 
slide it in so it's kind of central on. And then push the two boxes together. I then tend to put my hand in one of the pockets to press down so that it's adhering to the inside. It's a little bit of a faff that bit, but it's just to make sure that it is it has grabbed. And then I tend to fasten him up and just leave that for a minute or two to make sure it's all glued in place. And whilst that was drying, I'd normally be like cutting these pieces out but we've already done that. We've also cut some of the rolled roses out and we've glued those in place. So we've got one more to do and I'll just show you quickly how I've done that. Obviously it's a little floral die like this and it cuts the card out like this. And I use a quilling tool because it's so much faster. You can use tweezers or you can just roll it with your fingers. You don't have to have tools. But for me, it just makes it so easy just to roll it together, like so. And I just let, let it go to find its shape. And we'll put the hot glue gun on. That would help, wouldn't it? So yeah, the quilling tool just has a little slit in the top there which you slide the card in between and then you just roll it. It's a handy little tool to have in your, your toolbox. So I'll just wait for that hot glue to, to heat up which should only take a few minutes. I also want to mention to you that these brackets they come with little um, screws when you order them um, and they're great for if you're using chipboard and things like that but for card not so much so I actually had a big problem um, I had some mini brads and although they worked it didn't really grab a lot of the card at the back um, so off I went to find some brad suitable and brought them home and yes they had long legs but the head of the brad was far too big because you have a latch that slides over one of the heads it's got to be quite flat and not bulbous and so that was a no-go so I thought oh crumbs and then my very good friend Edna Taylor and you all know Edna she said, have you tried Tim Holtz long fasteners? And I said, I haven't had any, but I'm away off now to find some. And I did. Uh, again, Amazon. Um, and they are fantastic. They just your mini brads, but with long legs. Saved my bacon. So thank you, Mr. Tim Holtz. Uh, and thank you, Edna. Um save my day that did so I think we're all heated up now so we shall put that rose together wherever we put him and you just want only a tiny little amount of glue there and be careful because it is extremely hot I'm used to it by now because I've used, been using hot glue for a long time but uh, yeah it does get quite hot I must say I must, I must also add before I forget I'm gibbering away here uh, the cardstock I have used for this project is All Tonic Studios Craft Perfect card I've used the Ivory A4 I've used the Black and I have also used the blue and I absolutely love the cornflower blue. It's beautiful. So that's the rose made. So there's a pile of roses made. This should now be glued in place. What I would say is you can actually put 
a little bit of hot glue underneath the uh, closure if you wanted to just be just be very careful because when the metal gets hot it's even hotter um, or you could use like a glue gel medium um, just to be sure that they are in place so I always tend to unhitch one side at a time so that you're not putting too much pressure on the hinges and then it's all glued together now as you can see this one isn't as long as the one I made previously um, but this is just for some photo some little photographs um, for a gift for a friend so I think now we will glue the front on knowing it's all glued in place all dry so we'll put those clasps down and as you can see the box just meets because of the same size um, on the one I did previously I actually made the back box bigger than the, the front box by using those base and lead lines on the scoreboard uh, and it just enabled the front to sit in the back but I prefer this method because it does sit nice this has a tendency to move and then looks uneven so that's why they're the same size so we shall uh, glue in place so now we have the boxes that we made earlier with the lens and we're just going to put some adhesive quite a bit because it's holding some weight it does weigh a little bit and then this is going to be placed on the front of the box there and just take a little view that you you've got equal borders each side there and just hold it in place for a couple of seconds before we embellish any further so it's quite um quite a, a project uh, I won't lie it'll take you a while but I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it I love making things like this I really do and when this came I was absolutely blown away but I've had a sneaky peek of some things that are coming up and my word you crafters are in for one heck of a treat to say I was overwhelmed and I'm not going to talk about it too much because I will end up crying um, when I was shown what was coming I actually cried because it's something I asked for back in January and I never thought it would be made not in my wildest dreams and uh, wow I cannot wait to get my hands on it let's put it this way I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I'll end up crying again that's how passionate I am I, I love craft I really do and when I see something that really rocks me boat well I'm away with the fairies so I think that is now glued and we are ready to decorate so we'll start by putting this little handle on and again I'm using wet adhesive. I do apologise if I keep going out of shot. So we glue that in place and that's going to go on the back box and it can be a little bit fiddly to hold so I'm going to turn it round so that I can I can hold it in place. Now you could actually stick this on the box before you put it together it might actually have been easier to have done it that way but if there's a harder way to show you then I'll show you the harder way you can guarantee it so just hold that until it's grabbed which will take a minute or two yeah I never do anything the easy way always do everything the hard way always go the long way around anything that I do honestly husband just shakes his head oh dear come on Mr Glue grab 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 cannot wait to see what you guys make with these dies oh my word I can't imagine the things that you're going to make I know they'll be amazing what the DT have made for these wow I mean did you see Alice carousel 
wow I need to make one of those I really do I've got the um, the pole ready <laughs> I just need some time now fantastic idea I don't know where Ali gets her ideas but she's amazing all the girls are amazing there I think we've that's grabbed now at least I hope it has Mm, maybe a bit longer definitely should have stuck these there's a top tip don't glue it the way I did glue it before you put it together I think it would be best because you can hold it better that's that's the thing because it is a little bit there's other glues grabbed right so that's the handle in place please stay where you put and then I'm just going to shape this film strip with my fingers so just shape it, manipulate the paper, warm it up a little bit and then we're going to stick it to the side here and then we're going to bring it in and stick it to the front here. So again I am using wet adhesive and I am going to wait until it's uh, grabbed. So I'm just going to stick it there. And I'm just going to hold it in place. I know it's boring watching uh, glue dry, a bit like watching paint dry I guess, but I don't want it to fall apart because it's going to uh, a very good friend who uh, I, I talk to a lot and she's amazing. You all know her, but I am not going to say who it is because then it won't be a surprise, but um, she's a very dear friend. So, just want to make sure it really has grabbed before I go any further because it's going to get some pull on the front. grabbed now and then we want to put some glue on that front piece and then bring it round and then I'm going to see on my other one where I place the glue because I want it in exactly the same place and kind of turn it and twizzle it so I will hold that in place. I'm sorry if I'm boring you to pieces here, waiting for things to dry. But uh, I don't want to have to go back and, and start gluing again. So you will have to wait till this is dried because, there is, like I said, there is some pull on there now. So really make sure it's completely dry on that side before you glue down the front. I suppose this is the beauty of red liner tape and, and wet glue. It can hold it to some degree whilst the glue is drying. There. I think that has grabbed sufficiently now. The one for the TV, I actually placed the pearls on first, um, which are the Ivory Seashell Nouveau Crystal Drops. And I actually let those all dry in place before I went any further with decoration. So if you've not got stick-on pearls and you want to use your Nouveau Drops, I suggest doing your Nouveau Drops on the box before you put it all together and completely let it dry for 24 hours because they can still be a little bit soft underneath um, and then add your decoration but I, I, for this for obviously this reason I'm, I'm going to add mine later on um, so I think that's grabbed now 
So we've now got that film strip glued to the front and I quite like that quirky angle of the uh, film strip. So I'm going to switch the glue gun on and then glue the flowers in place. If there's any questions whatsoever that you want to know, please don't hesitate to either message me on the video or message me privately, whatever um, you want to do. So, we shall start sticking these in place. So I use um, wet glue. And it just grabs instantly, really. I mean, you could add anything you want here. You know, you don't have to use this this flower. You could use any flower that you have in your stash. So I'll place that one in there. And then I'm going to stick one to the back, back wall there. Just hold it for a second. There we go. Just keep adding them one at a time. Wish one just in the back any of the hot glue straws you can um, melt afterwards with a heat gun so you know don't worry about those so much there we go yeah, add another one to the front You know, they, they could be any flowers that you've got in your stash. They could be ready-made ones. But I do like making flowers. There's something about making your own flowers. I think it's just that when you see a finished project from start to finish and you think, well, I did that. I did all of that. So just make sure when you're placing them on the top that you don't go over you know keep to this side and then do the other side because obviously you'll not be able to open it then so and we'll stick three if we can get three to fit on to that side we'll stick in there There we go. All in place. And there is your finished camera. Like I say, you can add, we'll show you this one. We can add pearls to here, just leave it on its side, decorate it, leave it overnight, um, and then your pearls will be dry. Uh, but you could do that beforehand, like I said. So, yeah, you just unhitch the sides one at a time and then it could be birthday reminders, could be a Christmas list of all the people you send A to Z to uh, cards to as crafters, could be an index system for your dies. So, you know, whatever dies you've got in alphabetical order, this could be an index system for those. It really is just up to you what you put in here um this one i had in mind for photographs so photographs could be added in here of and then you could put the year 
um, it could be a baby album, could be a wedding album, could be absolutely anything you want it to be. Um, so the main thing is have fun, have lots of fun and really play. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope it's been helpful uh, and I've not waffled too much as I usually do. Um, but thank you very much for joining me and thank you very much for uh, clicking the link and following me as well. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you very much and I hope to see you all again soon.